morning everybody. Hope you're doing really well today. I've come to finally tick one off the list really to record. Um, yeah, welcome to uh, Snowdown Colliery. The amazing history that still survives in this wonderful place. So I'll uh, see you on the other side. Enjoy your history lesson. In the beautiful Kent countryside lies the former Snowdown Colliery, which stood as one of the four chief collieries of the Kent Coalfield, its location chosen being conveniently situated alongside the main Dover to Canterbury railway line, which would prove useful for the site. The colliery was begun by the Arthur Burrs von K Syndicate in 1907. Then, in 1908, the sinking of the number one shaft began, but no sooner had the shaft been dug, it encountered the problem that many Kent coal shafts had experienced in the years previously. The shaft hit water, and at 260 foot it flooded, with 22 men drowning in the disaster. The second shaft was successfully sunk, and on the 19th of November 1912, coal was first brought to the surface from a seam at 1,370 feet. With this, the colliery became a thriving hub for the coal mining industry in Kent. However, in 1920, the Emergency Powers Bill temporarily increased wages for six months. The result of this was reduced pay for miners. Because of this, in 1921, the Snowdown workers went on strike and the company went into receivership. As a result, the colliery closed in 1922, although it did maintain pumping operations so it could be sold as a working mine. The colliery was mothballed for almost two years before it was purchased in 1924 by Pearson and Dorman Long, who had started a new colliery at Betters Hanger. Pearson and Dorman Long completely modernised the colliery, converting it into its former steam plant into a new electric one, as well as purchasing a 600 acre site and a public utility society, Aylsham Tenants Limited. The company also built Aylsham Village nearby in order to house 650 mining families, because prior to this, most of the Snowdown workers had actually lived in Dover. Because the pit was the hottest and humid pit in Kent, causing severe heat stroke for the miners, who would normally work naked, it was labelled by the miners as Dante's Inferno, but the colliery would be more famous for being the deepest in Kent, reaching well over 3,000 feet, and at its height employed almost 1,800 men in the 1940s. Its demise came when, like with most of the coal mining industry in the 1980s, it took a huge hit. So the writing was on the wall, and the site eventually closed in 1987, with the shafts being capped in 1988, with the site now being a long lost reminder of Kent's coal mining past. Morning, so yeah, what a glorious day today I've chosen for all of you to have a look at. So obviously this place has been done to death literally, um, but obviously I haven't done it for my channel, so I thought it would be appropriate time to do it. And what makes it really special is that the fog has uh, created a light sort of blanket over the whole area. So no, it's not my camera being blurry or out of focus. It is uh, the wonderful sort of colouring and everything else that the fog brings with it. So, standing in front of us is the carpenter's workshop and then you've got three separate rooms, which is the fitting and blacksmith's room, the repair shop for the trams, which is the sort of one in the, you can just sort of see the roof in the background, and then the stores, so it's kind of like a big block together. So, um, pretty exciting. Let's go take a look, come on. Right, so as you can imagine, with most places now that are quite popular, it becomes less accessible. But for me, because it's my channel, it never ever bothers me in that way because 
as long as I'm here to document it as a historical record, I'm all good with that. Whether I get to go into everything, it's completely up to whether it is accessible or not. But let's be brutally honest. The fact that what is left here is incredible in itself is amazing. We'll take a look. So I don't want this to be a boring video for all of you, so not that it's going to be rushed or anything, but it's just going to be just my take on this site, knowing that the amount of people who have recorded on here. Okay, so stores, um, that's the tram repair shop we think. Uh, the fitting and um, blacksmith's rooms, which are both of those two rooms, and then the carpenter's sh room <laughs> or workshop, just the one that we first visited. So we're just trying to do our best today just to sort of document the actual places themselves if possible. So let's carry on. So one of the things that I want to show you, or take you to, is just here, and it's a nice bit of detailing. It's this uh, little bit of tram, and it's conveniently, <laughs> conveniently points to the actual tram repair shop itself. <laughs> so if it doesn't give you an indicator of what it was originally used for, that should hopefully give you something. But you can see, I mean, like I said, this place is like littered with holes in it because obviously all the explorers that have been here previously and, you know, people have blocked it up. And that's fine. Like I said, you know, I don't, I'm not here to sort of worry about any of that too much. You know, I always think that I don't mind it. Like I said, you know, it's totally fine by me if they do that. So uh, yeah, and then um, if we look through, <clears throat> this is the only, like I said, at one point, not too long ago, you would have been able to access, I wouldn't say most of it, but, you know, some of it. And obviously, you have to understand that the buildings that are here, really only a fraction of what would have been here on the site. So we have to be grateful for the buildings that are here because they do give us a wonderful insight into the history of this place. Let's carry on. Okay, right, so in the history lesson, we only bri briefly spoke about the um, importance of the train line really that was here, but it really did supply quite a huge lifeline for the actual site itself. And uh, what you're seeing now is the locomotive shed. And then, bef bef well, in b well, behind those, on that fence, actually where the train line is. So you can see, <laughs> it's literally here. And uh, again, you can imagine that these were the huge, where the, well, where the locomotives, I'm assuming, would have entered and exited from in the shed. Amazing red brickwork that shines through on this place is truly amazing. The fact that that the colour, if anything, will take us back to another place in time, which is amazing, isn't it? And then, as we exit here, we'll show you some more stuff. So, again, really, if you look at it from a historical point of view, it's sad because. This place, if anything, proves that when loads of people come to an area that it makes it less and less possible for people to actually explore it. And that's the sad truth, really. 
but you know, in a strange way, it's understandable. People have every right to explore places as long as they're safe. But unfortunately, this is what happens when too many people go. You know, you've got to imagine this was in the 80s, this shut. You know. This is the uh, storage, I'm assuming, for the shed. There you go. Right, okay, so let's have a look at the other buildings. We'll sort of point them out whilst we're here. So that's part of the offices, or would have been the office. That building right in front of us, that little building, is uh, the cement store. And then this building here is the archives building, which is probably one of the most underrated buildings here in terms of its significance on the site. Like I said, that wonderful little cement building there. Yeah, I mean, it has just been an urban playground for a lot of people. But for me, like I said today, you know, I'm not really sort of going to be climbing too much in and out of places. It's not really for me to see that. I'm just literally here just to actually document the site more than anything else. But yeah. Fortunate nature of the graffiti. I know what some of you are probably thinking, you're thinking, oh, like, you know, why didn't you go down into that locomotive shed? And I'm like, no, I just don't really, again, I'm on my own. I think people seem to get this, is that when you're on your own, it only takes one incident for you to sort of forget or to slip or do anything. Can't get back out again. If it was with other people, we're climbing this like a jungle gym. But not today. Not today, I'm afraid. Right, so like we said, this is a cement store. Would have been a cement store. And, uh, yeah. I suppose it's quite nice to see the tiling still on the buildings. You know. You don't often see that, although if you looked at those other buildings from the inside, you'd probably note that actually there's a, a lot of it's been pulled down. Which gives a lot of light, but more importantly, you know, as I said before on my channel, it gives a beautiful um, shelter for nature. And again, like I said, to, to be honest, I want to try and respect that as much as possible as much as possible within reason, it's always going to be difficult. But yeah. Onward, so we've got, so like we said, that's the, the archives building. And then one of the entrances that you would have driven down from. Okay, so whilst we're here, we'll point out a few things. That little building, all that building there is the pump house. And then this grand building, which really is the sort of significant building, or one of the significant buildings, I suppose, on the site, is actually the uh, powerhouse and the winder house. And then just behind it is the lamp room. And as we look down to our left, all those buildings on our left are offices. It's all these. Although, the building at the back, the one with the chimney, interesting story about that. So, it wasn't, I don't think, actually, at one point, that might have gone through a couple of different bits of phasing, and its last phase was actually offices. So, yeah. I think we're doing alright for this sort of showing you around, they were actually labelling the buildings. 
you know, I was trying to think, I was trying to do something a little bit different on this that other people haven't done. I think the first thing is that it's a foggy day. <laughs> and uh, I perfectly was expecting not to sort of get into places. And again, like I said before, not worried about that. But uh, if I can try and document it as a historical record, fantastic. Let's keep going. Oh. Right, so this is part of the pump house. Although, actually, this is a toilet. And the pump house is uh, in the next adjacent building. So these are the old toilets. Love exploring toilets, don't we? There you go. Doors, and then you've got I'm assuming no original roof. So, what you see actually is uh, probably what would be there in terms of you've got a, a little tiled roof there that might have been open to the elements. Let me get round there. Anyway. We know the difference between an old and a new toilet. There you go. There you go, so we found some modern modern phasing from the site, proper modern phasing. Because as we know, these buildings probably were part of the uh, early 1900s phase. There we go, right. Let's get out. <laughs> right, so I'm assuming this is part of the pump house. There's a little light up there. And I don't really want to go any further in because there's a lot of wildlife that are using this at the moment. I always say it on my channel, but can you imagine how noisy this place would have been at one point? You know, can you imagine that? I've seen so much wildlife around here as well, it's absolutely beautiful. Stunning. There we go. I like the way that the sort of haze is sort of glistening off the building. This was being one of the powerhouses, and then this would have been the lamp room. It's actually part of the building. It's actually got graffiti on it. There you go. So let's have a, again, you know, we'll, you know, we can't redo really much. in the sound of construction. Sorry about the uh, lack of torchlight in here. It's quite interesting, you see them covering up the entrances and then somebody's clearly tried to sort of hammer the way through with not really much luck. I mean it would take forever. Not only would it take forever, It'd make a hell of a racket. But you know, <laughs> You've got to admire them in a certain way, do you? I don't know. <laughs> Leave it up to you in the comments below. Is it worth smashing through the structure 
just to see if you can get through it. Who knows? Oh. what was known as the lamp room. Again, I'm sorry for the lack of real torchlight. In the sink there. It looks like a fuse box and light switch, original door, lights there. Behind. Some storage. And there's that green colour. Amazing green. Look at that. You see that? up into this. How beautiful. Almost like a cathedral of industry isn't it really? one of the doors and the entrance is in. I'm sorry for not bringing proper torches, that was really sort of rookie of me. I actually thought I packed a stronger one but I clearly didn't so many apologies but you can see it so I've not totally ruined the experience for all of you. I probably have actually. Probably ruined it the moment you first saw the video like oh my god he's done another one. He's done another one that everybody else has done. some asbestos tiling in there. Wow. Even just to get into one of these buildings is truly an experience. So yeah, hopefully you're enjoying it so far. Let's carry on. Come on. Okay, so there was the powerhouse went into the lamp room. These are the uh, offices that I was sort of saying about, and uh, straight in front of us would have been the other entrance or exit. Sometimes you'd go through one to get through to another. You see the chimney on this one gives us an amazing clue. I'm gonna just walk back so you get to see the actual, um, well, as much as possible really. It's 
imagine at one point this there was so the other one we're going to explore is the other powerhouse or well, the fan house really and uh, yeah so these like I said these are the offices obviously into what would be called the central complex really you know the only building that we probably could have accessed but we actually didn't it was part of the uh, locomotive shed not too worried about that to be fair the buildings themselves are almost just as interesting on the outside as they are on the inside but really what you're looking at predominantly with any building of this age and the amount of people that have gone in it just going to be a lot of uh, holes in the roofs as we saw and just really a hollowed out husk really and uh, so whatever we record today will be good but I'm quite humble to know that if I can't do everything or if people are screaming at me going oh you missed a bit it's like I'm okay with that I'm okay with that today as long as I've got the buildings as long as I labelled the buildings it's the most important thing for me so I would say this is the offices what would have been the other entrance to the actual site itself It's nice that we actually got to see some phasing, which was good. I do like a bit of phasing. So, you know, what I mean by phasing for me is different sections that can be defined as different parts of its historical sort of past. Right, so what we're looking at now, in historical terms, coming out of the mist, is the fan house, and the winder house. And uh, why is that important? Well, because actually I think this site, this actual building has got heritage status. I want to say it's grade two listed. I want to say it's grade two listed, although don't hold me to that. But I think it's the only building exclusively on the site that is actually um, grade two listed. I might be wrong. Feel free to let me know in the comments below. Like I said, I'm not perfect, you know, as I always say, just because I love history doesn't mean that I'm always going to get it 100% right, so, you know, stay patient with me. Oh, um, we'll talk about those other two buildings in a minute. That's a little explosive store right here, and then the building behind with the roof was the vehicle repair shop. Doing really well, aren't we? Okay. Right. Let's go for a nosy. Right. So we've made it into the fan house and the winder house is also here as well which is next doors it's probably one of the most beautiful buildings inside even when you look for everything else this bright sort of blue color that comes through this what i'd call sea blue almost you know what i mean by that and it's huge it's literally a cathedral of industry as i always say but the actual site was really don't forget how important this site was historically in Kent. There we go. Again, you know, so many people have been here and they've explored it. So I won't be the first, I definitely won't be the last. ladder that leads to nowhere. Looks like a diving board, doesn't it? Same with this one. You've got these huge chains.
you can see so what this is it's a huge beam you can see the two cranes incredible used obviously for lifting amazing really incredible So we walked past it, but I thought I'd sort of save one of the best things till last. Snowdown Colliery Shaft number one, at a depth of 83 metres, diameter of 5.49, capped August 1988. There you go. And this would have been, um, I think if this is shaft one, this might have been the one where those men died his workers crazy to think isn't it you can imagine at one point this would have looked very different so underneath that concrete was a huge shaft or did lie a huge shaft scary isn't it? it really is so we're sort of heading round now we've almost come to the end of our journey unfortunately of documenting what we can and uh, yeah it's been really good we haven't finished yet obviously but uh, yeah I just always keep thinking, you know, with places like this, can you imagine the sounds? You know, I said the fan house and the winder. It's just, oh, there you go, look at this. Look at that. Isn't it incredible? You know, as a history lover, you know, you, I wonder if actually uh, the local schools that are around here talk about, you know, this talk about how important it was on the industrial scale it would be really interesting to sort of know always believe it's worth teaching obviously history and if you can teach local history it gives kids a younger generation a sort of you know a wonderful excuse to sort of check out their local history and see how important it is look at that steel ring bit of architecture, it's simply stunning isn't it? These jewel circles. Once this, how amazing. Okay, so this is um, <laughs> covered in bird feathers, which I'm not obviously going to move because that's disgusting. Uh, but this is shaft number two. And uh, <sighs> there you go, gives you a depth. 
reading there, but you probably saw it in your history lesson. <sighs> Ugh. The diameter of 5.54. And it was capped again in August 1988. There you go. I can't actually remember how deep this one went. But you'll know in your history lesson, so don't worry. Num remembering numbers has never been my forte, I've got to admit. Imagine just this concrete plate and what hides underneath it. And its vital role in history. Incredible. Let's keep going. Right, so we're sadly coming towards the end of our story of snow down cholera. Um Really, there's only a few buildings that remain, so let's take a look at them. Um, we've, we've probably seen the best stuff, to be fair. So the stuff that you can access is easily, the, in my opinion, the best stuff. So the fact that you can do that. Maybe the locomotive shed was all right. And maybe, like I said, you know, the offices. But in terms of historical significance, probably the best stuff was really the two shafts, obviously. So this would have been the vehicle repair shop and you can tell probably one of the later although it's a sort of 1920s construction probably is probably one of the more sort of later modified ones to a certain degree so we'll take a look let's have a look inside come on This was the vehicle repair shop standing behind me. Uh, would have been where the vehicles would have entered from. And you can see the roof is fairly intact, to be honest with you. Though the rest of it leaves a lot to be desired. Again, I'm assuming where the electrics went. That obviously looks like a bit of a later phase. to it amazing not much in this one but as we said before it's not it's more than that really isn't it it's just this incredible history that is left as a legacy I think they've put a bird box up there so I'm not going to stay too long in here don't want to sort of take away from the wildlife that's already here so let's, let's get out of here come on Second to last building, yeah? So this is the explosive store. This insignificant building would have been used as explosive storage. Which is kind of weird to think that, you know, with it being especially so close to the site. Uh, but yeah, we'll just walk around this. Because you can't really sort of enter it anyway. There's, there's a slip, but I think that's really more for the uh, wildlife preservation, as we always sort of say. And I don't really want to have to sneak into somewhere knowing that there's lots of wildlife in there. So, uh, let's take a look around. And then, yeah. There's your vehicle repair shop. Beautiful. Right. One more building to go and then we are when we fully explored the place. Well, you know, we've documented it as best as possible, should we sort of say. And this one, unfortunately, it's a really sad sort of relic almost. A long forgotten part of its history. Which is a tank and uh, pump house. A 
such a sad shame really that you know this building is chucked all the way out here missing out on all the all the fun of its sort of uh, its neighbours but uh, for good reason as you can see that water that would have been stored in that place. Amazing. Extremely dangerous though, which is probably why, probably why they fenced it off. We've done a really good job of uh, fencing it off. So yeah, let's have a nosy around and just see if we can get some more good footage of this place. I doubt it though. I don't really fancy sort of climbing some sort of fencing for today just to sort of look at this but it's a unique bit of history like we said before and you can see in relation to it being the furthest thing on the site that is still here obviously because like we said you know we're looking at this but actually a lot of it has changed well not a lot of it has changed but there would have been more buildings is what I'm trying to say so forgive me oh God, I bet loads of people out there are going to be like oh I can't wait to criticise this one you're wrong, you're wrong, you're wrong. Oh dear. I try, okay? Like I said, I love history, but it also means that I'm human, which means I can get it wrong. Yeah, just, you yeah. know, I try. <laughs> right, so, is the colliery stands behind me. In this beautiful landscape of Kent countryside. I'll say goodbye. Thank you as always for watching. Stay safe. And the immortal words of Phoenix history, because history matters, really does, doesn't it? Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you came along with me for the ride. I did as best as possible and I tried to change it up a little bit compared to other people's ones. Just to make it a little bit interesting for you, a little bit different. So hopefully you appreciate that. Thanks always for watching. Stay safe no matter what you're doing, and I'll see y'all very soon. Take care for now. Goodbye, everybody. Kapow.